Well, it's the old RF, and uh, I get a lot of questions about learning to sharpen. Nobody knows how to sharpen anything these days because it's a plug and play world and you are shooting adult broadheads. That might require you to sharpen them and take on some responsibility. So I'm gonna suggest you take a knife, a cheap knife you got laying around and learn how to hand sharpen. Stay tuned. did this last night with my son and I can't believe with all of my brilliance that I have not thought about this to practice sharpening something that kind of doesn't matter um, and learning how to hand sharpen if you decide to try to learn how to freehand sharpen. You can you could start this baby with one of these Lansky gizmos and you can actually sharpen broadheads on one of these. But this is like field sharpening, and then once you get to really trying and putting out some effort, which, you know, I don't want you to get a blister or anything, have, you know, little hands might get cramped from having to work at stuff. Get over yourself. you got to have sharp broadheads. So Thomas brought me this knife, and it's kind of a cheap Kershaw switchblade. Not really, but it's a lockback, but it does that. It's cool-looking little clip so you can be tough. And it is garbage steel. Everyone has one of these pieces of crap laying around. I don't care what it is. The cheapest knife you got. Make sure it's a lockback so you don't, you know, shut it on your fingers. And don't email me if you shut it on your fingers because I warned you. <laughs> but you can take a really cheap deal knife. And if you ruin the blades on this thing, who cares? It can be a little frustrating to start to learn to hand sharpen. But once you get there, your body just kind of learns what feels right. And you need one of these, that's a straw. So we'll get to that. Okay, so Thomas, actually, we did this last night and Thomas got this thing. It is doing fine. Okay, so it's sharp. I taught him how to do this and I said, wow, if somebody else did this on a piece of garbage junker knife, which everybody's got in their drawer somewhere, you could learn to sharpen freehand on broadheads and not ruin broadheads and save you some money. So this knife is currently, this is my beat around knife. I mean, it gets hogged on everything. And it is, you know, not exactly awesome. You can hear it really raspy. I mean, oh, it's sharp and cuts paper. No. <laughs> so we're gonna start like we always start with the Sharpie, okay? I'm gonna use a coarse DMT diafold. This is, I don't know if it's coarse and extra coarse. It's the black and blue one, whatever. And this one I know is fine, extra fine. Okay, and then we're gonna to go to the straw. So, as always, we're going on this, this sharpie edge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can hear me because I'm talking also. Okay, you just wanna, I'll take this out, okay, and go. Okay, the video is over. <laughs> okay, so you just want to put some Sharpie on the blade so you can see your work. Your goal is not to see it real shiny back here, which means you're working on the backside, and your goal is not to only work on the front and the, you know, it's just like half a millimeter wide, which means you're, your bevel would be like that. You kind of want it in the middle. Most knives have a preset bevel from the factory. You can see that one right there. See the Sharpie on there? But you can see the bevel that was on there. Eh, let's see that right there. You just kind of follow what's there. Don't make a new knife out of the deal, right? Okay. See, oh, right there. So you'll see the shiny part and then it goes into the blade. Just work with what's there. Your first goal is just to grab your sharpener and kind of tilt it on there and you'll feel it all of a sudden kind of bump. It, it takes some sensitivity, you might have to take some time. <phone rings> to learn something new. But you're just gonna try to feel the bevel. And then in the case of our knife, we're gonna sharpen. I'm gonna start, because I know this knife's beat to death and it's dull as a hammer. 
with this guy. This is the heavy side. This is the black side and it really gets it going. So you're just gonna kind of start grinding away. Go around the corner and then check your work. Okay. I've got a nice even bevel there. The, the Sharpie is way over the bevel. This knife's really old and beat up. But you can see I got it all the way around the corner. Okay. So I sharpened into this side. Okay. Just to get it going. And then I'm just being practical here. I sharpen away on the other side just because I'm right handed. So on the other side of the knife, we still have the Sharpie. I'm just going to push away on it. Once again, I'm going to try to hit the original bevel. Now, your strokes need to be this direction. A lot of people go like that. And I don't know what they think they're going to do scraping it like this. It doesn't cut the steel. You're actually cutting a new edge. This doesn't do anything. So you want your, your motion to be forward and then just work your way down the blade. Okay. And then some long strokes but you're still pushing mostly this direction, okay? You're not going like that. I mean, I give this to people all the time. They go like that and go, it's good, right? <laughs> no. So you need to push away, okay? Now, this is hard to describe, but you're just going to have to feel it. So the side that I pushed away on, the, there would be a burr. The steel will actually be like this. And that means you've cut through. If you don't feel a burr, I'm pushing my thumb this direction and I'm trying to feel for that curve of steel. It's literally teeth like this. If it's not, if there's no burr, keep going. We're gonna get the old hogger side. We're gonna go back on. We're gonna push in on the one side. And yeah, I'm sure some sharpening guys are gonna email me and tell me I'm an idiot and all that stuff. Well, that's fine. You're a PhD. I'm not. This works. Okay, back to the other side. And we're just gonna keep trying to work that bevel. Once again, I'm going more forward than anything. And the tip really gets beat up. You don't know how much you work the tip, so really beat on, you know, grind it off pretty good. And it's there. So just doing that, when I push this direction, I can feel a little tiny burr grabbing my fingers. It's actually pushing this direction. It's hooked like that. Okay, there's a little wire edge. I'm gonna go down to my fine, extra fine, okay? I'm gonna start like I always did. I started pushing. And you'll get a knack for the angle. And just once again, mostly push forward. Mostly go towards the back of the knife, not towards the point, and work around the corner, okay? Push away on this side. This is the fine side. You can hear it's not as raspy, it's smoother sounding, right? And then three or, three or four pushes on the push inside. So this is away side. This is the inside towards the knife. And just a real nice... What that does, that burr that's on there, you're actually gonna cut it off and you want the blade, you want the bevel to get like this. Before with the burr is like that. And you want to push into that burr and take it off and the little teeth will pop off and go across and the blade will get sharp. You know what we had before? I don't know if I'm any good at this. Okay, so we're gonna go like that. And it's already cutting good, but listen to it. Hear that high pitched it's darn close. It's way better than it was. Okay, you hear that high pitch sound? We want to take that out. So this knife is probably hair popping sharp. This keeps you from shaving your body and bleeding. When you get them really sharp and you start to cut hair, you'll cut, I've cut my skin off when you get really good at this. So, strops only go backwards. Strops only go backwards. Straps only go backwards. You do not cut into the strop. It'll just cut into the leather. The only thing this is is a polish. This side has rougher hair on it, and it has some uh, 
some of that green aluminum oxide paste. It's a little rougher, but it's not much. And this side, I have sanded with 2,000 grit sandpaper. There's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to clean this drop and maintain this drop. And you got to keep them clean because they get full of steel. I'm about to have to clean this side. You see how gray it is? It's not bright green. That's from the steel deposits coming off of the blades that I've been sharpening the broadheads because I sharpen my broadheads a lot. I think I'm gonna change the camera angle because this kind of blows, so hang on. We're gonna do this. All right, and a, you know, gratuitous advertisement for the Shoot Adult Arrows hoodie and t-shirts. You should buy one of those, or below there's a banner on the bottom, you just click on that, buy your shirt that's awesome and cause trouble at the archery range or the shop with the flat rim guys. Get you one of those. All right, so this is, I'm just going to, you don't push real hard, okay? You just put the blade, you, and this angle is not as critical. Now, a lot of people want to do this motion, and that's not what you want. You want the blade to slide. So you want to go like that and then go around the corner as you get to the back of the knife. One, you just keep this kind of even. So then you flip it over, and then I work from the tip forward just because just I'm right-handed. So I go like that. And go like that and you'll feel it it will be tugging it's really an interesting feeling and you have to do it a lot and you'll know when you kind of polish it off like that and then like that okay now i'm gonna wipe it off get the aluminum oxide paste off don't don't cut yourself and then we're gonna go to the slick side you can just see that thing is like a mirror and you want it that way. You don't want it gripping. This is the this is really smooth. And you just kind of, and you won't believe. You don't have to be real critical on the angle because this thing can't change the blade. Okay, the the, the hand sharpeners and the diamond stones can actually move the bevel around. This is just polishing it. Now you don't want to be dragging it like that. Of course, you just want to get on it. And from what I understand from the stropping guys, it's it's better to be a little high meaning it's more into the bevel. If you're too flat, you see that space right there? It won't do anything. So you just, you're better to be a little high and go like that, go like that, go like that, go like that. And this is a cheap, cheap piece of steel. All right, back to normal. We're gonna see what the comparative analysis is here. See how thin we can get it just for fun. Little pigtails. All right. We got a little piece of paper here. And we are really, really good. Real quiet sound. It Once again, it's a really cheap piece of steel. And it's real, real quiet. Well, look at that. And the sound is real quiet. So it goes from hiss. I don't know how dull this knife is right here. This knife's probably real dull. You hear that? <laughs> That's not a good broadhead right there. You do not want to do that. Versus just beautiful. So that's a good way to practice sharpening your learning to hand sharpen with a pretty inexpensive knife. And then when you go to broadheads, you, you, you're already ahead of the game. The steel's gonna be harder and the bevel's gonna be more pronounced. So this is a 225 tough head and you can see how really obvious the bevel is, okay? So that's gonna be a lot easier to pick up when you sharpie it, it's gonna be just on the bevel. Okay, the trick to single bevels. Work mostly on that, okay? 10 or 15 strokes on this guy, and then just ride the ferrule on the back. It's just more practical. I know it makes the angle a little steeper, but it's an automatic guide and you'll be more consistent. And then away, maybe two or three times with each stone, and then feel for the burr. And when you see it, feel that burr rolling over, take it off on the other side, 
okay? And then you go to the strop. So using a cheap knife is a way to, you know, waste a bunch of time learning how to sharpen. Listen, when you start this, it's going to be annoying. You're going to be going like this with your wrist, and you're going to see the way things all wobbly. You're going to tend to sharpen too high at first or too low. You'll get, you know, he'll be like that, <laughs> just hogging the hell out of it. And, and the bevel will be like this, and it won't get sharp. So follow the factory at bevel that's there. I don't care that they're cheap, okay? And get your broadheads where they will flat cut like that. Okay, and your success rates will go up. Listen, this is, this is the most overlooked thing in archery is really sharp broadheads and very durable broadheads. So there's a lot of cheap broadheads, including a lot of the mechanicals that use really low grade steel. And they may actually be sharp in your hand, but at impact, they get shredded. You've all seen these and you've all had it happen to you. If you're, you shoot it through a deer or an elk or whatever, and you pick up your broadhead, and I mean, if it hits a rock, come on, it skips off a tree, got, shoots through a deer, hits the ground, pretty square, right? It's just normal deal. And you pick it up and the blades are flattened and mangled and shredded. You need to be thinking, okay, that thing was sharp in the, in the quiver. <laughs> Why does it look like that now? So, so that's the actual integrity of the steel itself being able to handle impact. Flying through the air, broadheads don't get dull. Flying through random and sundry sinews, scan bones, and random and sundry other things, they dull because they're really moving pretty fast. And then all of a sudden they slam into something that's pretty hard. So you need to consider when you're buying broadheads, what the quality of steel is. And that's why the, most of the really good single bevels, if you see a single bevel under, I don't know, 50 bucks for three, you probably need to be considering what pop metal they're making out of. There's a lot of broadheads that are formed and they make goo into a pile and they shoot it into forms and they grind it off kind of good or they're stamped out. And the steel quality, you can get them that sharp. You can get them this sharp. But it's been my experience that those broadheads fail when they go into the animal. So they, they lose the edge, they erode rapidly on impact, and then you don't get your critter, or it's a long tracking job, or you don't get a blood trail because it literally doesn't cut anything. What happens if a broadhead dulls on impact, it turns into the end of a screwdriver. Elk wallow. Feral hogs have a lot of mud on them. A big Midwest whitetail is pretty thick. Hair's no friend of steel. I don't know how many times y'all have tried to cut through hair, but it's annoying. That same thing happens, but it happens at 250 you know, or 70 feet per second. It's an exponential amount of effort. Newton and his third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Trust me, the tissues are fighting back at the equal amount of pressure your broadhead puts on the animal, they're pushing back. And if that steel may be sharp in the quiver, and then it erodes after impact and goes through the pulmonary tissue and all that stuff, and it's soft, flattened, or dulled 50%, you should assume that 50% of the things it touch will not get cut. It's a pretty straightforward deal. And if you don't cut anything inside, the animals don't go down as efficiently. And it's a long night, and you always got to wait 30 minutes, 45 an hour. That's because your broadhead quality is terrible, and they're dull. So take on this responsibility. Learn to do this. Get your, get your cheap knife laying in your drawer somewhere and get it to where it's, you know, really good. Cuts paper. And then learn how to do that. Learn how to strop. And then go to your broadheads. And the first one, you may still screw it up. Fine, but you won't screw up two or three or go out there with a dull broadhead and say, well, I tried, but I got to shoot these things because I bought them. And they're 50% dull and they won't cut paper real clean. And uh, and then you're sad. And then you complain at the broadhead guys and say their broadheads are no good. But you didn't mention that your broadhead wasn't sharp, that you tried to sharpen it, but it was dull as a hammer. <laughs> That's called lying. And, you know, it's okay. You can do that stuff, but 
you know, some of us have to sleep at night. Hey, this is a ranch ferry, and uh, apparently you're supposed to hit the bell thing and hit the subscribe button. That's fine. If you don't want to, I don't care. It's going to be fine. Everybody's fine. They'll pass it around. So if you get this video and you think it's useful, pass it around. And for all you super technical sharpening guys, hey, careful here. I'm trying to help the other 95% of the world. I know there's ruby stones and some crazy $200 stones you can buy and really can get crazy on this. I know that stuff. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. What you need to say is maybe this guy's actually trying to help people who have no idea what they're doing and at least they'll get to the next level and they might go to the next level. So that's my deal. So I don't really care about the PhD sharpening guys, but I'm here to help you guys who really want to learn how to do this and shoot adult broadheads because it's going to increase your effectiveness rates to get them sharp. The broadheads won't dull on impact and the animals will go 45 yards and go down and it's an easier recovery for all the effort you've put in when you went in the field. All right, I guess that's enough. Enough blubbering. I'm done.